Okay, can you guys hear me? I didn't have my headset put on beforehand, so just doing a quick mic check. Hopefully you guys, yep, should be able to hear me. Somebody give me a response in chat if I'm actually coming through audio, please. Give me a response in chat if I'm actually coming through audio, please. Never mind, I just checked my own stream, I'm there. Okay, so this is going to be, um, thanks guys. This is going to be Designer 101, and uh, I'm kind of doing this series because I get asked uh, usually a few times a week. Used to be even more than that when I was a known name. But um, people ask me how do I set up a course, how to go about laying my holes out, um, all that kind of good stuff. So this is going to basically cover that. I'm going to be starting one from scratch. As you guys can see, I have no unpublished courses or anything else on here. So I'm going to be taking one from the very beginning concept all the way through. Um, by all means, you guys are welcome to ask questions. I encourage you to ask questions or at least comment, you know, make it a little bit fun while we're doing this. Um, because part of this can be a little bit tedious. That being said, if you have questions, please kind of keep them to the subject that we're talking about at that time. Um, like when I'm going through and actually just starting to lay holes out, you know, and everything else, don't start asking me about retaining wall and that kind of stuff. Um, when I do my streams, when I'm actively designing, like during the day or something like that, you're welcome to ask me anything you want. And I'll try to explain it or demonstrate it as best I can. Um, but for the purposes of this, let's try to keep questions into, um, in the same realm. Um, I'm going to be doing streams the next couple of nights. I'm going to do them for two hours. So I'm going to run from 8 o'clock to 10 o'clock my time. Um, if I go over that, then they start getting too long. And it's hard for people to watch them and get the information and stuff off of them. So um, I, I really should be limited to one hour, but I'm going to go ahead and do two hours. Um, the idea behind this course is I'm going to go ahead and start it. Um, and then like I'm gonna have a couple of nights a week I'll probably jump on here and I'll work on some holes and hopefully you guys will check in for that as well so you can kind of see it you know taking shape and how my thought process works and changes and all that kind of stuff but um, I've got one course I'm finishing up and I've got a contest course that I need to start as soon as I get that one finished up because everybody's got a big time head start on me and I'm probably not gonna get to it till the middle of April beginning of May at the at the, at the earliest so I'm not going to say dedicated and just like bang this thing out. Um, so right now my plan is to do the next tonight, the next two nights. So Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday night. The next week I'll um, try to do some nights when other people aren't streaming and all that. Um, just so you guys can kind of check it out. Um, I'm going with the name The Greens at Old Morningwood on this because it's been kind of a joke for a while. Um so it feels like it's time to go ahead and put this one in so that being said while i'm getting some things set up here you guys need to help me pick a theme i'm leaning towards rustic um, only because i'm finishing one in boreal i don't know if i want to go right back to boreal i think i'm going to do my contest course in countryside it doesn't fit delta it could go winter or alpine but i'm leaning towards rustic but you guys kind of think about a theme there Swiss. <laughs> Why Swiss? Okay, so for my terrain, I'm going to take my water level all the way down to zero. Um, my hills on this one, I think I'm going to do about 25. I want some hills. I don't want massive amounts of hills. I personally never go over 60% on my hills anyway, regardless of what theme I'm working in, because it become it starts looking pretty artificial at that point so i'm going to give some minimal hills and to answer some questions i only go completely flat if i'm doing an rcr turn all my plants off trees off grass off rocks off want none of that out there when i'm setting this thing up um, but as i was saying if i'm doing an rcr i will actually make it a completely flat plot 10 um, 10 feet above the um, zero water table 
and I will work from that. But that's only because I'm adjusting elevations to actually um, fit, you know, um, exact elevations I'd be taking measurements on. So without that, I do like working in a little bit of auto um, auto generated terrain just because it gives me um, a little bit of a challenge in figuring things out. And of course, I can adjust it. I always go in and flat and smooth and raise and all that kind of stuff. But sometimes you get inspired with a hole based on the terrain that's given to you. So it's um, not a bad thing to do sometimes. And that's just a personal choice for anybody that's going to... Okay, apply it. Um... You know, for anybody, I mean, some people like working from a flat plot. And if you do, there's nothing wrong with that. So I turned down my holes to, uh, oh, you're just now getting in, Eric. I've not really started covering anything. So all I've done to this point is named it. I haven't picked a theme yet. I went through my terrain, turned my water all the way down. I set hills at 25, turned my trees, plants, grass, rocks all the way um, down and applied it. Now I'm going to go through layout, and I'm going to do zero holes. Fairway width, I'm going to take down pretty slim, and this is going to seem weird the way I'm ex um, saying this, but it'll make more sense later. I put my fairway width at Y or 5, zero fairway bunkers. Green size, I turn all the way down. Green bunkers, I turn all the way down. And let's apply that. So I've got one vote for Swiss, one vote for Rustic as far as a the theme. The name of the course is the Greens at Old Morningwood. It does not fit Desert. It does not fit Step. It does not fit Delta. I've got one coming out in Boreal. If you guys just want to see me do a Boreal course, I will do another Boreal course. But Boreal could be boring in this case. Um, I believe I'm doing my contest course in countryside, so, eh, but we can do whatever. So we got to pick a theme now. Why does everybody want to see Swiss, man? I'd actually almost go winter before I go Swiss. Why don't we have a fucking um, harvest and autumn? Seriously? Why do we have both? Well, I'll tell you what. I'm going to go with Rustic for now. And we might change it later because you guys will see. So we got that part done. Now then, let's continue. And we now have a course. You guys really want to see a fucking mountain course? Seriously? Is there a lack of like mountainous shit in this game? So first thing I'm going to do is go through and find some of these little spots right here. I just do this because it bugs the shit out of me. Yeah, that's my whole point at Morningwood. Uh, I I honestly don't know because in TGC 1, they never placed a clubhouse at the beginning. And I'm going to show you why I don't care here in one second. I always delete the clubhouse in the beginning. I always take it out. I don't use it as a point of reference for anything. So, okay. So, here we go. We're saved and we have got a plot with no watermarks and all that kind of fun stuff. So some of you guys are going to laugh at me when I do this, but the first thing I always do is break out my measuring tool and I grid off my course. I go corner to corner like this. That's always the first thing I do. Sets me up a big X that finds dead center and I'm actually even going to make that a little bit different. So I'll go to one corner, and I'm going to do the halfway mark, which is 1093.62. 
So I've got it off of that corner right there. I'm going to go to the opposite corner over here. And this is just a math trick. If you're not a mathematics kind of guy, then it wouldn't do me to explain it. If you are a math guy, you know exactly why I did that. And then I'm going to go from that notch back over to this notch. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'm going to go from one corner. I'm going to go 1093.62. So I'm doing this in a very slow way, apparently. The basic reason I do that is that dead center is actually um, 1093.615. It's like 1093.615, blah, 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 if you math it out. So if I go from this corner to this side to dead center on that, and then I go to the opposite corner to do it on this side, I'm actually splitting the difference of the six one the six one five blah 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 it rounds up to six point two five so this is close enough for what we're doing here and I'll show you why I'm going to do this here in one second so I'm gonna pre warn you guys man this beginning part some of you guys are gonna like roll your eyeballs and think it's very tedious but people ask how I do it this is how I do it and there is a, me a method to my madness on how I go about setting my stuff up so just double click there and then we're gonna measure back across here and hit that close enough so what this is going to do is actually give me dead center zero of my entire plot. And the reason I do this is that when I start planning my plot out, I will use these lines to kind of gauge where my holes and everything are going. Um, so for instance, um, okay, we got to start coming up with a course here. So I actually think instead of doing a parkland style and keep a lot of my holes close together, I think I'm going to spread it out and I'm going to do it almost in a square or a rectangle side. So I think I'm going to have my front nine on one side of this line. And I'm going to have my back nine on the other. And I think what we can do is we can run them up this way, this way, and then back down and come back up and meet the clubhouse here. And then take our 10th hole from here and run it up and come back around the same thing. We can bring the 18th back around and meet up with our clubhouse down here on that end. And that leaves me this much area out in front to, um, to do all the accoutrements. Have my clubhouse, have, um, you know, all that kind of fun stuff set up. So I just don't want to pinch myself for space. And I think doing it this way. When I don't have anything kind of pre-formatted or planned out. And honestly, guys, ordinarily, I do have, I have a course in mind before I do that. That's one of the reasons why I do this is I know what I'm going to be doing um, on my course. So I'm making sure that the way I've laid holes out in my little sketch pad, I'll take a picture of it and show it to you guys sometime. I'll post it in this particular thread and kind of show you how I draw holes out and everything else and how I come about designing before I ever actually design. So I'll tell you what, we're going to run off of this line right here. So before we do anything, let's go ahead and save just in case I start in and don't like what I'm doing. Not too far out. And in this case, I am going to go ahead and add a clubhouse now only because, and it doesn't matter which one it is. I mean, this is likely to change. I'm just setting up as a, as a landmark kind of deal. And this is my default favorite. So... I think what we're going to do is run just a little bit southeast of center on this. Uh, if I ever get 18 holes on it, I will. That thread's probably buried, man, but it's like I got some submissions and then it just kind of went bye-bye. And at that point, I was like, okay, 
you know maybe that was be smooth thing so yeah let's do our clubhouse about right here okay how do we want to do this fellas how do we want to do this so before I start a hole off I'm gonna measure off about a hundred yards off of dead center tell you what we're gonna go about 125 off of Uh, we may even go more than that. Let's go 150. Okay, that gives us 150 yards between where we're going here. So we'll do hole number one right here. Well, I'll do it when we have all all 18 holes kind of done in. I don't, I mean, it does me no good just to fill people's stuff in. With, I mean, it defeats the purpose of what it was in my mind of just me having, you know, 14, 15 holes done and a few people contribute a hole here and there. And I think we have like 11 or 12 holes, and that's fine, but I'd prefer to do 18 and then make it a community course. So, anyway, we're going to do our first hole here. I tend to do a little bit longer um, hole on my first hole and I think I'm gonna run it out here I measure out to 275 and I always make sure my 275 is below 275.5 reason being that if I have a particular yardage I want in my mind and I go above 275.5 it changes my yardage it rounds it up especially if I'm anywhere close to whatever my next yardage is gonna be 0.5 when it comes in so See kind of what we got going here on this angle. So we got 275.29. I think I want to do this as a um, 465 yard hole. So that's going to be 190 yards to the green from there. And I want to aim it kind of towards that line. So same thing on this. I want 190.5 or less. That'll work. Now it's going to give me a first hole of um, 465 yards. So let's kind of look around at that. That would be your first one. I think what I can do is hit out there. I can angle it. So okay, so that's our first one. Now I'm just going to measure off. Let's see. Let's go about 60 yards in this direction. 65 yards. Let's go 65. 65, 70 dish. It's all about close. This is an exact science. We're going to do our next hole. Be careful. That might push me a little bit more down there than where I want to go. Okay. So let's do a par five. Um, we say about 579. Let's do 579. So same thing. I always measure out to 275 because that's a good thing that defaults automatically to um, to driver. How do we want to angle this? Mm, well, on 575, I got 275. That'll be 304. So we want to go 304. Let's figure out the angles we're going here. Yeah, we'll just go kind of straight out in that angle. I think that'll work for me. Get 75 yards out. Sorry, I'm trying to envision my plot here and what kind of distance I'm going to have with what I do. So, um, I don't care about it at all. I'll change it here shortly, but it's a, 
man to be honest i mean you notice i don't change my lighting when i start on this at all either i don't change my lighting until i've got a significant amount of holes in um i don't care about my backdrop i'm going to take this to a pretty basic backdrop about as flat as i can get it in this theme um let's see if i do that so that's one two three four five six seven eight nine holes i have to do in there but i don't want to go too deep on this so i'll tell you what let's do let's do a par three here let's do a par three i'm gonna go 179 on it yeah it, it's something i don't even worry about at this point so that's gonna give me that And I may end up moving these around some as I um, as I start working on them and all that kind of fun stuff. So let's do a par four. So same thing. Go out 275. I think I can do this right here. And guys, right now I'm just kind of flying by the seat of my pants. I'm just kind of piecing shit together. We'll see how it works out. So 275, I'm writing down what I'm putting in. So I put in a 455, a 579, a 179. Let's do, well, it's going to be pretty summer. I'm going to do 453 on this, but let's, I think I've got an idea of brewing here. So that would, oh God, math, 453 would be 178. Tuck that in even a little bit more. Make this a pretty severe dog leg. Special. Oh, okay. Bullshit. I know what we can do here. Yep, that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go that direction. Yep, I think I've got a way to do this now. I think I've got a way to do this. Because now I've got an exit point. If I come across there. Same thing, it's going to do about 70 yards across that way. Do another par 3 because I can come out this direction on the par 3. I'll tell you what, let's go about right in there. Do 169 on that. Stretch that out just a little bit because I have a green and everything there to deal with. So about 75 yards that direction. Do another par four. So write that one now. That was 169. <laughs> Tell you what, let's kind of create our boundary for our course right there. I think that'll work. I actually think I may go back direction. Let's see. Well, it feels about right about right there. Okay. Now that I can work it back up, I think I got a way to do this. I think I've got a way to do this. 
let's do a long par four on this one. So. So if I do this, I can either bring eight or nine back out on the left, but I think I've got a different way I want to do that. I really do. Oh, shit. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. This could work. This could work. Holy shit. up Clint so we go 275 there and then run right up this line so that puts my green Check it out, but check it out, check it out, check it out, check it out. No, nope, we just got an idea that clicked here. That's all this is right here, so bear with me for one second. I think I've got something kind of rolling here. So if I go down here... So that is actually going to be nothing more than a guideline for what I have an idea for. Close enough. So if I do that right there, what's up, Terry? So that brought my seven back in there. So I have this area to work out with my clubhouse and cart path there. So I can actually start eight right around this area. Oh, okay, that's going to be a little bit tight right there by, uh, by what I was planning. But I'll tell you what, I'll fix it whenever I actually lay the holes in. That's what I'll do, because I can spread things out and all that kind of stuff. So, what do we want to do on this? Let's do a shorter one here. So... What do you think? 330 sound like a good one. That would be 255 and 75. So we go out 255. Might actually be able to make this one drivable. I'll toy with that. If I got 255 there. So look at that from the T. It's measuring out 275 or 330, but it'll be close to a 300 off the tee box. So I could possibly make this drivable.
Okay. Well, let's come back with the longer one on our um, ninth hole. It's, um, 464 is a magic number for me on the 1st, 9th, and 18th. So let's figure out where we want our green at. That's a tee box. Let's put our green about right there. So we have like a little bit of a view of it. And that also gives us the green of the 17th. Should be right there. That's probably going to be a little bit too close. So, Well, it's not going to matter. We're going to space these out here shortly anyway. And because of our angles, it'll be that way. What did I say before? 464, 275, 189. 189, is that right? Yeah, 189. So we'll go 189. This direction, and then 275 back this direction. And we'll figure out how to make this shit work later. Now give us our front nine. Now I think what I'm going to do when I actually lay the holes in is spread this out just a little bit so these aren't right on top of each other. Then again, I don't know. I might keep it that way. I mean, there's enough spacing in there. We go from the middle of the green or the middle of the fairway there to the green. We're over 80 yards, so that could ease up my planning a little bit. <laughs> of course, some of that depends. Do you guys think there needs to be water on this course? Does this feel like a water course? Because if I did, I could put a lake like right in here and have this long par for have a lake run down the right hand side I could also have it run down the right hand side there or I could have it over here on the left hand side cut through here on that and just be a big lake if people haven't noticed I enjoy um, I enjoy a lot of water on my courses I tend to build a lot of stuff around water So we do that, so then we come across here to our 10th. Yeah, let's do the 10th hole about right there. Let's see how far away that tee box is going to be. I think that'll be fine. And then, hold on, let me step back and look at this for a little bit. Gauge my shapes here. See if I run up there to that north side. So I'm just writing down some notes here for a little bit. I got to figure this out to a certain degree. So tell you what, let's do this. Let's go. Let's go like 275 this direction. Then curve it back in. There's my green, my tee box there. Too long we're getting into some serious length at that point I 
scoot off here. 65 yards or so. There's a 67. Let's do a par three, but right back at that angle. Do a long par three. What do you say? Let's do a 222 yarder. This is the other one's 179 and 169, so we'll have this be our one long par three. Okay, I see, I see, I see, I see. I see what we can do here. Okay, now we can fill up this top with a par five. And that will, we'll have two par fives bordering the top of our, yeah, that would work. That would work. That would work. So as I said before, I go 275 because that's just a good default distance for um, to make sure you get driver on every one of them. I keep it below 275.5. That way, if I have a distance or something in mind, and that's just habit. It doesn't affect this course at all because this isn't planned. But let's see. So back a little bit this direction. That way it gives me a little bit of play on the right hand side. So I've got all of that down there to work with. Okay, 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 okay. That didn't have to be anywhere near exact on that, so we're just kind of. I don't want to get that close over there. So. We got 275. This is par four. Hmm. I'm trying to keep that front area open as much as possible so I don't wrestle into a corner, but I don't know. I may get stuck here before I'm said and done. I'm going to angle this a little bit more this direction just to make sure that I keep the um, edges of the plot out of my sight lines. And this is just a generic distance I set up on everything. I mean, I, I change these holes around as I go through all the time just to kind of make them fit. So, so we'll do a shorter par four on this one. I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to go, since it's going to be shorter, let's do a pretty severe dog leg here. That one. Make sure we have a tree line where people can't cut this one off.
Tell you what, I think we will turn from there. want to do with this one. Eh, that's about right. Try to give an even mix long and short on this one. Do 146. What did I do? 170 or 275? And then 146 that gives 421. I think what I want to do now is come back and do like a long one. Yeah, let's do a long one. So let's just get a measurement of roughly yards off that. If we start it about right there. Yep, that's what we'll do. We'll do a 501 yard par 4. That should be a little different. However, I don't think I want that much angle on it, so... Don't want to dogleg it too much because of the distance. So I can move that in closer once I set it up. So that gives me 17. And then it gives me 18. Okay. Yep. I see what we can do here. Maybe. See if I'm smart enough to pull this off. Damn, I hate how touchy this thing is sometimes. Okay, that gives us our that gives us our general routing. I'm probably going to be changing some of this up, but it at least gives me an idea of how I can run through here on this. And that leaves me this whole half right here to actually use to set up my to set up my clubhouse area and all that. So if I want to do parking lots and fancy shit, I've got room to. If I need to move it, I can move it. That's the main thing I don't want to do is in my routing actually paint myself into a corner where I have no room to move anything. 
So this is why I laid this out the way that I just did. I know this seems like a stupid step, you know, or uh, you can just go through and do all this. But by doing it this way, I get a visual of where my routing is, where it will be tight, where I can start moving some things around. Like I already see, shit, a couple of things I can do here. I know I've got room on the right and the left and north and south on this plot to be able to move, so. Okay, so. Once I've done that, let's save it just in case I do some kind of like weird screw up here. And let's go through and start creating holes. So we'll go through hole number one. And we got our first dot. Well, maybe I only have eight holes on the back. Let's go through and count them here in a second. And so I have got 10, 11, 12, 13, 13, 14, 15, whoa, what the fuck did I do there, you're right, I skipped 15, I measured it out, I mean I got the measurement for it right there, what the fuck did I do there, there's another reason why I lay shit out, So there's my green there. So let's go same standard somewhere between 60 and 75 yards off of that one. regardless it's called a 197 hole here so good catch I had it I just had it buried in my shit right there see this is why I do stuff like that in case I make mistakes and not having this one laid out beforehand that's um, how that shit happens. This is why I do this kind of work before I ever start in. And then I can go back here in a minute and adjust my plot and actually have all the holes running the way that I want them to and get a visual on it. Da, 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 da. So this is actually par three, wasn't it? One seventy nine. I always put my waypoint and my center, my green, the exact same on my par threes. I think that's a stupid fucking function they have, but eh, it is what it is.
Let's see how we're shaping up here. And I need a glass of wine, so or a drink of my glass of wine. sticking that's just me being OCD trying to make sure I stick it in the middle of that dot to be honest you guys have to excuse me on some of that those that have watched me for a while know that I tend to be pretty OCD by nature when it comes to placing shit I can't help it I do it without even thinking about it so And you guys are welcome to ask questions or comment or just talk to me or whatever. So there's still participation in this. You don't have to just sit here and listen to me jabber on. So that brings it back around this side. Yeah, I might be able to turn this into a cool hole. It's short, but I think I could do something funky with this. What I'm trying to give is a very nice or a variation on my par fours of long and medium with a couple of short holes thrown in. So I don't want it to become redundant playing the same shit over and over. I may have actually done it. I'm going to look when I get done with this. I may have a bunch of them there at like 445 yards. Because I kind of default to that in my head when I'm going to things. So if we come up with too many. We can change distances here and there. And Okay, so that would be our front nine. I don't like how far away from the clubhouse this one is. So I think, I think, I think, I think, I think, I think we're going to have to do some adjustments here. Especially since I have this much room to work with on this side of it. I can angle this a different way and bring that one up. Um, exactly, stately. I do it so I have something to kind of look at when I'm going through here. That's exactly why I do it. It's completely for visuals. Completely. It also helps me, like here in a minute, when I go in and start um, building the first hole out, it gives me a little bit of a sight line of how the terrain's running and all that. It starts helping form ideas, especially given the fact that, keep in mind, I've not planned this course out. So this is very much just going to be whatever the hell I happen to think of as we're going through. So this could be interesting. You guys may have more input on this course than you thought you were going to before, before this started. However, when I go through and start actually building the holes out, I turn all of this off. It's out there right now just so that I can just so I can look at it. I mean, I haven't changed like any of the other shit like the greens, the colors and the rough widths and all that kind of shit. So this is going to be a long one here. That is one good thing that I like about TGC2 is that because of the ball physics, you can now effectively have a 225 yard um, par 3 and it not play like absolute shit. So that was actually a good thing. 
I mean, you still have to be smart in how you design it, but it's feasible now. And TGC-1, man, that was a hard thing to pull off, especially especially if you were going um, firm on your greens. I mean, it's damn near impossibility if you're going firm. You really had to know how to um, sculpt and um, and think it out if you're going that direction on fast firm in TGC-1. Which I rarely did did full on fast. In one, I did firm quite a bit, but usually I kept my green speeds down in the 160s. They were still plenty tricky, and I think firm played better on about 164 was like the perfect setting, green speed in TGC one for firm. So now let's just go ahead and get this stuff laid in here, so I can get rid of the lines and step back and. Adjust where I needed need to adjust. I think this back nine actually is spaced out pretty well. I kind of like the flow of how this one is. The front nine's not not in what I call good shape. Hell, you guys may actually get to see me work on a hole tonight. Holy shit! Might be a minor miracle. Figured I could kill two hours just in the setup. And you guys are starting to pick up that these lines right here were nothing more than just connect the dot. You know, I use it to space stuff out and so then you know what? I think that's gonna be a good distance right there. I think that's gonna play up because I can use some filler in there. Uh, I don't know, Pithy. I'm kind of in a mode right now. I mean, I'm not going to lie. Up until like last night, I was getting kind of sick of planning on my current course. But now then, it's reached a point where because of the planning, I like where it's going. and I'm eager to get it finished up. So I'm kind of all in on it now. I think it should be a pretty solid course when all is said and done. I like the looks of it. It just has a classic southern golf course feel to it. So I'm kind of kind of stoked about it. Hopefully you guys enjoy playing it as much as I did creating it. And if you don't, piss on you. You can tell me you don't like it, that you think it sucks, and I'm completely okay with that. Did I do, okay, yeah, I only did two or one par five per side on this. I'm like, did I make this a par 70 or 71? There you go, Kessler. I'm subconsciously making everything par 70 now. I don't know why. <laughs> it's just the way my mind's working. So everything's a par 70 now. Okay, and there we go. There is our plot. I'm actually pretty happy with how this side turned out. The front nut, I'm going to have to adjust some. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, fuck this. Thank you. 
this will not stay I'm using this as a reference right now because I've got an idea of what I want to do here all this is an idea of what I want to do so what I came up with on this is being able to have my driving range in this area right here and that sits up nicely because that's right off the back of the clubhouse it effectively separates the first and the eighth anyway I'll show that later I just want to get that in there so I can use it as a reference point for what I'm doing here and let's there's no splines in there okay we'll clear all and we'll save and before I go any further I've got to do this because it bugs the shit out of me we're gonna change our textures my default texture on almost everything is either seven or six I don't like the way that looks on that so we'll go seven I may end up changing that back, but I go seven on um, greens and fairways. Woo! Well, it should turn out bright, ain't it? And then I go thirteen on heavy rough and light rough. That is 13? Are you shitting me? Huh. Oh no. It's going to say there's no way. Well, apparently there is a way. Why is that saying rough settings? Let's turn that completely off. Turn that completely off. do this tight and heavy I found it helps some with putting and I just like to look better fringe width we're going to cut a little bit flag texture hmm should I change my flag up I always do the black and gold checkerboard, so should I do something different? I can do the TGC flag, I can do the black and white flag. I don't know. Somebody give me an idea on a flag color here. 
it needs to be black and white, black and gold. The black and white with the numbers on it or the TGC Tours flag. I know that I want to do HP Studios flag. So, come on, throw me a color, gents. You guys are just no fun. What is black with white numbers? Okay, stately, I'll pick the flag texture. Uh, let's get back over here. So, go T box, T box size, small. Come on, go, 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 go. Shit, we made it even bigger than that. Yeah, we'll turn them completely off later. I don't necessarily want to do that. We'll keep them at five for now. I usually turn them all the way down, but. Okay, uh, let's get our tea color. That's just a griff thing right there. That's just what I use. And then we'll set up the colors of the all that stuff when we get back to it. So I thought I turned all this shit down right here. I could have swore. Rough settings, rough width. I turned all this shit off already. Come on. Okay, I think we've got our basics in now. So, let's save it. And let's start looking how we're how our holes are running here. So I'm pretty sure I want hole number nine. To end up about right there. Which means hole number eight. Oh, I'll see what I did earlier. I just turned it off for one hole. Good God. <sighs> That's smart Griff. Mm. 
We'll do our bunker settings while we're in here. Texture wise, we're going to go 13. <sighs> Environment settings, theme, we'll go to theme, backdrop. Let's go with one that's relatively, I think that's the smallest hills there are right there, isn't it? Okay, lighting, don't care about time of day and all that right now. I'm going to go clear. I turn my clouds completely off, always, always. I don't care about high clouds. They don't do anything. Haze, not worried about Not worried about the rest of that already. I just want to make sure I didn't have any fucking clouds on there. Clouds piss me off. I don't like random shadows popping up in my course when I take the time to light the thing. And that's something that you guys need to understand as designers. And uh, I'm not speaking to anyone in particular, but you guys are getting too dark on your lighting. Um, I realize that everybody wants a glow and everything about their course, you can still accomplish that. But people are starting to take it to an extreme. Hold on one second. I wish you would have told me that before you started. You done? Yeah. Okay, sorry about that, guys. Wife of the ice maker. But anyway, as I was saying that we're starting to get a little bit crazy with the lighting. You know, if I have to have a flashlight standing on the green, you know, to play, then it's probably too freaking dark. I've been seeing a lot of courses lately that are doing that. It's just too much. You can, you can go 845 in the morning, you know, and have a soft glow to your course and it still be plenty light enough to, um, to play. But some of the stuff is just getting crazy dark. Yep, that'll work, that'll work, that'll work. Means four needs to move. in shape with what I'm doing here.
It's not getting too close to the edge of my plot right there. Okay, there we go. That opens me up some now and gives me some space. Well, it puts that shit in there tight, doesn't it? Well, once again, I may have to make some adjustments on that whenever, whenever I um, start putting holes in and that kind of stuff. So, well, there we go. We've kind of got our plot laid out where we want it to, all that kind of good stuff. That's where 18 comes across. It's like right through the side. It's a good distance right there from that. That's a good distance from there. So let's save it, and the question becomes. So there's my initial setup, gentlemen. There's our plot that we're going to be working with. We've got enough holes that run right next to each other to like give it a closed-in feel, but still enough space built to work out. I may change some of this around. I haven't made up my mind. I'm thinking I might actually do some water down in there. I might actually do some water across here. Let's see how that plays out. Oh, I did not adjust this hole. That's definitely got to be adjusted. Derp. Or, I'll tell you what, let's do this. Let's bring that one back in this direction. Yeah, that'll work out nicely, and then cart path can just come right off there, and bam, it's like right there. So, as I say, I think we've got a um, decent plot to work with here, starting out. So the question becomes, do I start working on holes tonight? It's 9.20. I'd only work on this for about another 40 minutes, or should I just end the stream here and start on hole number one tomorrow night? So, I'm going to take... A break really quick about a two minute break I'll be right back you guys can voice your opinions in the thread or in the um, chat box over there and we kind of figure out um, what we're doing here so you guys um, just let me know what um, what you want me to do you want me to go ahead and start on hole number one tonight or you want me to kill it and start fresh tomorrow night on hole number one I'll be right back
Okay, so uh, Stay Puss said keep going, so we'll keep going. So I've got my plot. Hold on one second, I need to test something. It's so freaking weird. I've got like the chat thing on my OBS studios. Oh, there it goes. So it is working. I will change the color of that before tomorrow night where it's easier to read. I did not realize the red would blend in so much. So, okay. So we're going. Just in case I didn't say before, I'll save again. And the first thing I always do is, oddly enough, play test a hole. Even though I haven't done anything to it, that way I get an idea of the land, my sight lines, where the hole is, all that kind of stuff. I like to know my terrain. I don't know why that teed me off with that, but... So at about 293, that gives me 171 into the green. Okay. That's about what we're looking for right there. So first thing we want to do is turn off. Well, turn off the fairways. What I don't like about this is that I'm not sure. I don't play with it a whole lot in this, but I don't know that we can set up a random freaking shape for our greens anymore, which is very irritating to me. Because I'm pretty sure when I go into like green settings here and hit random, exactly, it does that shit. And five is as small as it goes, so I'm just stuck with that fucking shape. Uh, I thought I figured out a way to do it the other day, but... I'll fix this while I'm sitting here. shy of 7.8. They make this shit so convenient. Okay, that works for me. That's what I wanted. I like that 170 mark for my green speeds right around there. So...
damn it. See, this is my sight line there, so let's do it about right there. And I will pre-warn everybody, I do not use splines very often, so if that's what your main interest is in viewing this, you get the wrong guy for that. I'm not a spliner. Of course, we're in the distance markers here. Uh, the thought process is basically do it until I find something I like.
And what I was looking at right here, I'm looking at my angle, and so I can explain that a little bit better. So I've got a dog leg left coming in. So my tee shot's coming down into this point. I'm trying to give, based on that look, a way to kind of throw the eyeballs off a little bit. So I want to run this on this particular hole back right to front left. So I want my danger to be on the right hand side of my green versus the back side, if that makes sense. And then I do that, I step back. That's a general shape that I like right there. So coming in, I should be able to bunker off like here on the front. So I think what I'm going to do is go with a bunker like right here on this edge and then go with a bunker like right here on this side and leave the back open. I think that's going to be my general idea on this particular one. That becomes a very traditional green. Go that route with it. What do you mean? I have to be very careful how I go about with the rest of my shapes because if I go that route, I need to kind of keep that feeling of the greens all the way through. So I think I can deal with that. Yep, yeah, let's do that. I haven't done one of these in a while, so. Sure, I got nice, even rough all the way around there. Blah, 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 yada, 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 yada. So, I think we're in good shape on that. So,
Of course, our driving range can go bye-bye. So, I, like I said, I just had that there as a placeholder. Ah, I think streaming actually fucks with my tempo quite a bit. And that's pretty much straight. That's about where it's going to be. Roll out that way. And we got to be able to see our green. Okay. Smoothing that out later. Okay, now we got to figure out if we want to dig these bunkers into the side of the screen or if we just want to let them be. I think we're just going to do some standard bunkers here. We'll dig some shit in later on.
for fuck's sake. <laughs> And unfortunately, this is part of the design process right here. I like that bunker going up into there. about this just isn't like flowing right for me for some reason. Okay, so fuck this idea. <laughs> uh, thought I might have something cool in my mind to be able to incorporate kind of a little gimmick right there with those two bunkers, but it's not going to work, so...
that's just going to have to work. Uh, we're going to crimp the shit out of our green, I think, if we do that. So, with that one bunker, and we'll hand do it with the soft round fuzzy after that. So, Okay, we'll just leave that there until we get all of our bunkers and everything else settled in. So I don't want to spend too much time working on that because that's not something I do when I'm initially setting a hole and stuff up.
Whoa. The fuck? And welcome to TGC2. So we're building a little angle off of that. Okay, guys. That puts us at the two-hour mark right there. So I'm going to call it for tonight. We got our plot laid in. Maybe I'll sit around and think about some of this shit tomorrow and actually have an idea of what to do with some of these holes because like right now I don't. Part of our initial problem right here is that I'm just kind of kind of freewheeling it. But I'm thinking what I'm going to do is have a not high elevated, but you're going to be higher up than the fairway, obviously. Let that drive come down in here. There's your look into your green. And I think I'm going to flank this side with like a long waist bunker down the side, like about right there. I may front that up. See if I go like right here with the bunker. Or is that 197? So let's go back about 75 with the bunker about right in there. Then flank the other side at about 310 or so. About right in there. Then run a waste bunker down this side up to about that point right there. That could look pretty cool. That could look pretty cool. So this may end up having a little bit more of a traditional feel to it than a modern course. Let's get one play test off of it really quick just to put an idea in my head. Really? Wow. I don't know. I mean, that's slamming the stick forward on that. <laughs> that's a lag spike all the way around. Of course. Uh, I was like perfect, perfect all day today when I was in the designer working my other course. I stayed perfect all day. I don't know what the hell. Crazy. That was actually dead on. It says slow, but that was a dead on strike right there. So my landing point's about between 280 and 285. So that means 312 comes into play if I angle it right. And you got 168. A 
That's not a horrible look right there. I think that might be what it is, um, Stately, is because I wasn't streaming earlier this afternoon, and um, I had no problem with my tempo, and now that I'm streaming, I can't, can't hit shit. What's up, Roy? So, just a recap. So we're going to kill it at two hours per night. So in our first one, we laid our plot out. Sorry if you missed that part of it. You'll have to go back and watch about an hour and ten minutes of some extremely boring bullshit. But we have our plot actually laid out. Still don't know we're doing a holes or anything yet, but I think that's a pretty good run at it. What's our... So our yardage is 72.40, and it's a par 70. So yeah, I think that'll work. I think that'll work. And then, so we went through, we actually laid our plot out. That's just a placeholder. That's probably not going to be there before it's said and done. So I'll make something to... I go a little bit smaller than that, but I think I'm going to fit my driving range in between my first and the eighth and ninth hole. I think that could work well because then I can tree line this side of it, separates that hole. I can do the same right here. I can tree line this side, but I mean, my fairway is going to come off probably at least 15 yards in that direction. So right in here, so can't be quite that wide. Not over there in that. And that's 100 yards wide right there. So we can take it to about 75 and that'll work out just fine. It's a good thing. So anyway, yeah, we laid out our plot. We put in a green and we put in couple of bunkers around the green so now we're just gonna tomorrow finish building out this hole see what happens so there'll be your landing spot so I got to figure out a way to create danger over here in the right if they drive too far but not make it exactly too easy to cut the corner and you guys get to see me measure out how I want to handle the, all that as well but so we'll have our corner kind of like running right up in there. But so for your best shot, you'd actually shape a shot into this area right in here. Probably hit it right up in there and then you'd take the bunkers kind of out of play. Unless you had a slow shot. When you hit it over into here with a front pin position, you'll definitely bring them into play. And I'll definitely have a pin up here in the front. I have one back here. Probably have to have one about right in there. I mean, it just seems like it has to happen, right? So there's a 459 yard hole, so yeah. Probably move one about right there and then one right here. We'll just take them straight across on that. So I have to create the contouring and everything else on it. Could be interesting. Play a shelf right there and let it flow down to the front. And the same thing. Keep that shelf going across and let it flow down to the back. So that could be an interesting hole. Could be an interesting hole. But, okay guys. I'm going to save. I'm going to get out of here for the night. And um, I will see you guys tomorrow night at 8 o'clock. Appreciate you guys checking in. If you have any questions for me tomorrow night or anything, then by all means, let me know. And I'll do my best to answer them. So you'll have a good night.